Once you find yourself in conflict with a narcissist, it's a virtual guarantee they're going to start playing head games with you. That's why I put together a new course. It's very extensive called Anger Games. I'm going to teach you how to manage anger and conflict with a narcissist. There's a link below that's going to show you how to register, and I hope that you find it to be very insightful. You know, it can be interesting for you to ask the question, how well really do other individuals know you? And the, the answer to that question is, well, it all depends on who we're talking about. There are some individuals that you know fairly well, but they're just not going to know even some simple little things about you, like what you had for lunch yesterday or how you're going to spend this weekend or things like that. Or there, we, we could be asking that same question about people that are very close to you, like the person you live with or individuals on, on, inside your family. How well do they know you? Well, probably in those relationships, you have the opportunity to show yourself or who you are in a much fuller kind of way. Uh, and they may know some of your uh, pluses, your minuses, your interests, your disinterest, uh, your uh, successes, your failures, those kind of things. So it all depends. Uh, full disclosure, 100% revelation of who you are is not possible, but in your healthiest and closest of relationships, what you'd like to do is to say, well, I want to make myself known as much as common sense will allow. That's what healthy individuals do, and that's how we can find heart connections and ultimately, hopefully, we can have some satisfaction. One of the defining features, and actually that, that's not saying it strongly enough, uh, at the core of narcissism is the commitment to the false self. When we talk about the false self, uh, they, they don't want you to know who they are. They, they have a carefully crafted image that they want to portray. And even the people that might be on their inner circle are not going to get to know them well because narcissists have such a craving for control and they, uh, they need to be in that superior position that they don't want you to know some of the pain and some of the struggles that are on the inside. As a result, these people constantly will do the blame shifting game. Uh, they are bullies. <laughs> they try to, uh, try to make you so defensive because that keeps the attention off of them. They insist upon being uh, in control. They have absurd levels of defensiveness. Their false self is basically a script that they live upon. It's a formula that they maintain, and uh, they they uh, uh, they do so in the purpose of uh, trying to find the uh, for the purpose of trying to find the favored position. As you get to know a narcissist, you realize the false self is bogus. It's pretentious. It's a costume. It's fluid. In other words, it shifts based on whoever happens to be on in front of them. It's self-promoting and it's a trap. It's a trap for you. And frankly, it's a trap that they're in. Now, as you see the, an individual like the narcissist who has this false self, a very, very natural byproduct of that is keeping secrets. Uh, there, there's so many things about themselves that they don't want you to know. Uh, and when we ask, well, why would anybody want to keep secrets, particularly of a substantial nature? Uh, there are plenty of reasons for that narcissist. And, and one of the biggest ones is they want to protect themselves from feeling judged because they, their history says that's what happens when uh, people find out who you are. Uh, in addition, part of the reason for them keeping secrets is they want to create a power dynamic. It's like, no, I like being the one who has power over you. And so the more I know about your junk and the less you know about my junk, then the better off I'm going to be anyway. I don't know about you. Interestingly, they also can keep secrets because they want to create a bond. Now, uh, by that, I mean they want you to keep coming back. They look for narcissistic supply. If, if they can give the impression that everything is wonderful about them and you just don't need to know about some of those uh, uh, difficult things on the inside of themselves, then you'll keep coming back and give them admiration. Of course, over time, as you begin learning some of the things that are really behind you know, door number three over here, uh, the bond that you have becomes a trauma bond. And then also they keep secrets because they're trying to escape their own shame and their feelings of inadequacy. 
Now, to that effect, I want to identify seven of the most common secrets that narcissists will maintain. In, in most cases, they will not reveal these that I'm about to tell you, but it's there and it's very real and it's very impactful in their life. Let's run through them. One of the first secrets they maintain is um, they carry a great deal of psychological pain. They don't want you to see their psychological pain, but the, the best way for you to know that they have a lot of psychological pain is they disguise it as anger. On the inside, uh, they have had a history of, like I say, being judged or worrying about their social status or feeling rejected or um, uh, being the recipient of many conditions that other people put on them. And, and as a result, uh, they hurt, they struggle. It's like, people are gonna be down on my case but instead of saying that, they just get angry. What's wrong with you folks out there? You're the problem. You're the one that causes everything on the inside of me. And in their blusteriness uh, with uh, with that, then uh, actually they're hoping you're not going to know that actually much of their anger is their way of saying, I'm dying inside. I'm struggling. I'm hurting. Now, in addition, a second secret that they maintain, and this is a very large one, and there's close to 0% chance that they'll admit this one, and that is, Narcissists harbor self-hatred. Now, <laughs> they, they, they're they known for being self-impressed. They're known for trying to make people think that they're wonderful. What's this self-hatred thing? Well, notice that uh, part of them being secretive is they don't want to be vulnerable. They have lots of excuses for why things go wrong. And, uh, and whenever you do find something that might be questionable about them, they go into massive denial What's that all about? By virtue of the fact that they refuse to reveal who they really are, it's their way of saying, I'm embarrassed by me. I'm embarrassed about things that are a part of my deep history. I'm embarrassed by some of the weaknesses or flaws or inadequacies that I carry, and I don't want you to know it. I hate that side of me so much so that I'm not going to tell anybody about anything if it's going to make me look bad. That's what we refer to when we talk about their self-hatred, and uh, it, it's their way of implying, uh, it, you know, it, I don't want to tell you because I don't even want to have to admit my flaws to myself. That's how much I despise some of the things inside of me that are just not, not adequate. A third secret is they struggle with psychological incompetence. Now, they like to make themselves to be the gold standard. Uh, one, two of the favorite words that they have are the words, I know. I know how things are supposed to be. And so they, they try to come across it in a bossy kind of way or giving you advice that you didn't ask for. And uh, they work really hard to make people out there act right so they can feel good in here. Why do they keep putting all of their, uh, so much effort into making everybody else out there be correct? It's because they don't have anything on the inside to draw upon when things don't go well. Uh, when, when you are not what they want, or if you just have different plans, it's like, I don't know what to do with that. And so, uh, there's, there's no internal peace to draw upon. There's no internal competence that they have. It's like, I don't know, but so what I have to do is I have to force you to do my bidding and that way I'll be okay because you see, uh, secretly, I don't want you to know, but I'm incompetent. Now, a fourth secret that they have, and that is they build their self-esteem by destroying your self-esteem. That's a pretty pitiable formula, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> basically they're thinking, I become a somebody when you become a nobody. And you, you'll notice that you've been on the receiving end of lots of put downs or mocking or ridicule. Uh, basically uh, they've decided it's in my vested interest to drag you through the mud and to make you look and feel as bad as I can. And they'll second guess you, et cetera because secret, uh, secretly, that's that's how they find their sense of well-being. It's a terrible strategy, but they think, well, it works for me. I just, I just don't need you to know what's really going on. Uh, a fifth secret that they have is arguing, and then we mentioned the anger, but arguing is their superpower. It's like, well, if I can come across in a, in a very strong and overpowering way and very definitive and very invalidating of you, then that means that I win. I'm, I'm now a somebody, and their arguing is a well-honed skill. 
Sometimes they'll, uh, they, they can interrupt. Sometimes they'll uh, poke holes through whatever they think your logic may be. Sometimes they know when to give you punishing silence or uh, they'll hold on to contempt. Anything that uh, they can say, uh, I want you to feel badly and uh, you will not win with me. It's like, that makes me a good person. A sixth uh, secret, and they sure don't want you to know this one is, they actually envy you. They envy anything that good, good that might come your way. I recall one woman whose husband received a kind of a lifetime achievement award. And her comment was, well, he would never have done it for me and my family. And she couldn't just say, hey, way to go. I bet you feel proud of something like that. You know, narcissists, when somebody else does well, they're thinking, well, that needs to be me. I want what you have and uh, because I don't have it for myself. I don't have enough. And as a result, your good fortune threatens them. They're too envious of that. Envy actually is a form of a hidden form of anger. And then a seventh secret that they have, and that is they deeply fear irrelevance. One of the reasons they're so pushy, one of the reasons they're so stubborn, one of the uh, reasons they're so insistent, it's like, no, you have to see me as being the ultimate source of truth and wisdom. And when they don't get it, uh, they pout or they hold grudges or they uh, superimpose their, uh, themselves anyway. They don't want to be irrelevant. They just don't want you to know that they feel that way. Now, you've probably heard the old saying, you're only as safe or you're only as healthy as your secrets allow you to be. Narcissists, because of their commitment to their secrets, become very toxic. They're not safe individuals. They're highly immature. They can become mean. They can become disinterested in the real you. They're, they're unenlightened because they don't want to learn. They just want to maintain power. They are pitiable because they purport to know much more than what they really do and they're the consummate posers. Now, should you call them out on their secrets? And the answer is, oh, if you want to, but uh, just make sure you don't do it in the hopes it's gonna make them change. But sometimes you just need to allow yourself to be known as somebody that says, I see through you. Whether you call them out openly or not, I'm hoping you can realize that's what's going on inside of them. And they're wanting me to be the, uh, the loser, but I'm not gonna take that role. Uh, openness, conscientiousness, goodness, dignity, respect, and civility. That's what I stand for. And you know what? Being that kind of person means I don't have to keep secrets. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Please do so. We're going to keep more videos coming your direction. I know many of you uh, look to this as an educational process, and I'm so pleased to be able to be involved in that effort with you. If you have a need for therapy, and many times when you're dealing with situations like this, that would be warranted. You know I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. It's an online resource where you can, uh, the timing is very good because they tend to get back with you pretty quickly, and it tends to be uh, uh, good for your schedule. Uh, it's so good to have somebody that will sit down and say, I want to know you, and I want to know what your issues are and what you're up against so we can work about you being uh, on you being your best version of you and how to fend off some of the strains that you may have in front of you. If the need is there, please please <clears throat> go through our resource and uh, invest in yourself in that way. Likewise, through the, my years of, as a therapist, I'm retired from my therapy practice. I've gleaned a whole lot of information. And so what I've done in my retirement is I've put together courses. And uh, they're like online classes. They, you can individualize them, of course. Uh, and then you can use them with anybody you want, frankly. And uh, each course has at least 25 teaching videos. And each video has uh, written documentations and guided questions. Uh, and, and hopefully there's a great therapeutic value there. We have my most recent one, Anger Games, which is all about not getting sucked into the anger that they bring. And then in addition, you may be aware also that I have This Is Me, Free To Be, Ready, Set, Connect, and you can look on my website and see what they're all about. Uh, and I'm, I'm real pleased with them because it's a way of continuing to offer up the, the therapeutic uh, mindset that's just been with me my entire adult life. In addition, I have my webinars, which are 90-minute presentations. Uh, also, we have my uh, articles and uh, access to my podcast, uh, my books on the website, etc. Okay, you're only as, as healthy as your secrets allow you to be, like I just said. Narcissists are the consummate secret keepers, they, they, so much so that they, they can't even admit to themselves who they really are. Understand that, but then as you see that, I'm hoping it just gives you that much more of a sense that says, well, I want to be somebody that's open and vulnerable in the appropriate ways. And as you do, it can allow you to be a person of steadiness. And in the end, I'm hoping you can find perhaps what they can't find, but you can find 
a real sense of peace. 